Hello everyone, I'm Shasna from Bachelor of Landscape Architecture degree program. So people have used or lived in mountain areas for thousands of years, first as hunter-gatherers and they did animal husbandry. The isolated communities are often culturally and linguistically diverse. Today, about 720 million people, or 12% of the world's population, live in mountain regions, many of them economically and politically marginalized. The mountain residents have adapted to the conditions, but in the developing countries, they often suffer from food insecurity and poor health. They depend on crops, livestock, and forest products, and tend to be poor. In developed countries, mountain areas are prosperous, famous for tourism and recreation, totally opposite from the developing countries. Hillside areas have 28% of uh, forest cover, sensitive than the lowland areas, and high ecosystem regulate water flows and so as in particular. As a place where we have number of potentials, we have to get the maximum benefits of its resources and make it as prosperous as in developed countries. Let's see what we have around our context. The first thing we notice is the context is, is topography with various kinds of shapes and forms and lots of vegetation. Particular is located between Ambevela or here railway station in Colombo and Badula main right. Particular is the highest railway station in Sri Lanka and the summit level is located in Yampa. So this shows how particular came to be. The foreign invaders happened to find the Novarelli area is perfect condition is in perfect condition for crop plantation and they began raising tea, rubber and coffee in Nore Elia area and began to transporting, began transporting the harvest to Colombo. As a result, the railway station was built. After some period, the railway network began to expand, fragmenting the surrounding forested area. By and by, a railway station was built in the area to facilitate the transportation of goods, yet becoming the main reason for attracting people to the context. Eventually, as people were drawn into this area, a particular village was formed, which affected the surrounding natural environment furthermore. The context is formed with several layers like forest settlement, road networks, which ultimately form the village. There are two access points. One is Colombo Badula Railway Line and the other is the World Ends Road. The access from Kirindel is not much in use. Particular is a rural village and the nearest city is Nord Elia. Agricultural land uses are most prominent and they do floriculture and olericulture. The entire land is covered by a dense vegetation cover as well. When we talk about the particular railway station, it's a hub where people gather. Uh, therefore, the outsiders are less contacted with the village. People mostly visit the station because it's the highest railway station in the country. The village does not have a school and people have to go to other nearby cities for their studies. Due to topography, the accessibility is very difficult as well. After studying a number of research papers, discussions and case studies, we found a number of potentials and opportunities and the best of them are nature, knowledge and biophilic sense. When we talk about the nature, it's very rich and unique with number of shapes and forms, a soothing climate and a vast range of flora, fauna and natural resources. We are using nature as a potential because we can address poor human well-being in Sri Lanka using nature. Sri Lanka is among the most stressed countries in the world and the happiness level is also low. In the literature reviews, we found that the nature can do great wonders for our well-being and that's why nature is an abundant opportunity as we have all the resources, but we are not taking the benefits out of them. Knowledge is the second potential since it has a rich knowledge transfer due to the railway line, yet it has been neglected due to difficult accessibility. Last but not the least, biophilic sense is another potential, which is again abundant because of the rapid development and economic growth. All these potentials, all these are potentials, but they have all gone unseen. Now we are going to talk about the first potential identification, that is nature. As already mentioned due to topography, there are a number of variations in the land with shapes and forms and other features with some of the highest mountains in Sri Lanka. The characteristics of the topography is shown through the section and the diversity of the area is also very rich with endemic species of flora and fauna in all the sizes. The climate and the natural resources are also prominent, especially in the misty environment is unique. 
The soil quality is very rich and the fertility rate is high, which, is, which contains a great deal of moisture. We can't forget the water resource in this area. This area is the watershed for many of the main water bodies in Sri Lanka. All this proves how unique the nature in, our, in this area. When we talk about the strategy based on nature, first we consider about the nature-human connection. In the Estrella Healing Garden case study, the natural environment is always connected to human body through our senses. In the survey we conducted with 250 participants, the majority say that they feel an energetic feeling in the mountains, that they feel the climate shapes and shapes and forms and the resources. So based on that, we came up with the strategy and we are going to target the people who have lost their tune or energy and aiming to amplify their body mind and spirit using natural energy by increasing positive factors and decreasing negative factors and the output will be a person with a better tune and energy so we can achieve a number of benefits mentally physically spiritually and also socially so the first strategy is applying natural energy in the nature towards the outtuned person to amplify him or her into a better tuned person. The next potential is knowledge. When we talk about the evolution of knowledge, the early people had a well-connected bond with the nature. After some time, they shifted their native settings to various places in the land. Because of that, they gained a diverse form of knowledge from each other. Some stayed with the nature and some continued to live with their newly found culture. In particular, the first thing to prove that this place has a better knowledge transfer is because the station is working as a landmark because most of the people visit the place to go to the other places and do activities like hot and plains, birds and hiking and etc. Most of them are outsiders and we can see the locals and foreigners from the graphs. Therefore, we can identify two categories of users insiders living in this area which we categorize like hill people and the outsiders which we categorize as urbanized people and the various forms of their character characteristics. The topography is what that attracts urbanized people from outside towards the hillside. As a result, the knowledge stays in particular. We took that as a potential and made a strategy for that. After the studies, we identified urbanized people have a vast theoretical knowledge rather than the practical knowledge. And to gain that practical experiences, they are attracted toward the mountains. And the hillside people lacks the theoretical knowledge for urban people. Based on that, we build a strategy. Combining both practical and theoretical knowledge within hillside and urban people to create a well-balanced person who is connected with the outward. So the final potential is the biophilic sense within people. In the past, uh, people used to live with uh, harmony with the nature due to the rapid growth of population and rich competition of economy. Their harmony with the nature was fragmented. As a result, they became human-centric rather than nature-centric. Therefore, the biophilic sense inside the human got sunken. So what is this biophilic sense? Biophilic sense is the innately emotional affiliation of human beings to other living organisms. Innate means hereditary and hence part of ultimate human nature. With the abundance of the biophilic sense, the area is facing a number of threats. According to the picture, the surrounding area of Partipola is being cleared in a rapid rate due to the development of an agriculture. We can see the threats are expanding from lowlands to highlands and from particular village to lowlands, which is similar to the spreading of a wound. Because of this, the place is suffering from landslide, soil contamination, deforestation, agriculture related water pollution. And we came up with a strategy to harmonize the built environment and natural environment. So in this area, we can identify natural and built environment and we can see a conflict between the two. So we are going to interfere the conflict with a design that connects natural and built environment, which is controlled by a non-human being with hidden biophilic sense. When they connect with each other, it acts as a grindstone and sharpens the hidden biophilic sense within the human. And with the sharpening, his natural sensitivity will be recovered. As a result, he harmonizes with the nature and ultimately the built environment will also be harmonized.
So in conclusion, we came to our vision statement that is proper utilization of environmental energy for a sustainable future in a knowledge-based system. And below is the summary of the strategies we came up with to fulfill our vision. And the red ribbon, uh, the red folding paper we studied as a design which enhances our interaction among each other and as a design of knowledge transfer. And the dual change airport must be resolved at Crab Walk Bridge are studied as designs that harmonizes the natural and built environment. So in a summary, according to the case studies, we came to a conclusion that they are educational, recre reconnecting man, human and nature, enhancing social life, recreational, enhancing community well-being, sustainable, and so on. And finally, these are the references we have studied in the process. Thank you.